the initial thought was to um, uh, to stab into the umbilicus uh, above the above the navel, so I could get the inferior vena cava or the abdominal aorta and it'd be um, bleed out with no no time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. This video contains the interrogation of a man who inexplicably decided to murder his wife, three children, and pet dog, and then continued to live with their bodies for two weeks. Viewed from the outside, the Tots were the perfect, happy family. Anthony and Megan had met in college and married soon after, joining together in a private practice where he was a physical therapist and she was a yoga instructor. Things were going well, and when their three children, Alec, Tyler and Zoe came along. Megan quit her job as an instructor to become a stay-at-home mom. They were all friendly and outgoing, well-loved by their neighbors and community. The children were involved in the arts, and Anthony was active as a youth soccer coach and worked with disabled children. Things began to change in 2017 when Megan supposedly contracted Lyme disease. She became more withdrawn and suffered bouts of depression in a move that may have been an attempt to alienate her and the children from friends and family. The Tots moved from their home in Connecticut to Celebration, Florida. Anthony spent most of his time in Connecticut working in his clinic. He put on a great deal of weight in a relatively short time and became depressed and frustrated when he was diagnosed as a diabetic. In April of 2019, Anthony Tots' life began to unravel completely when it was discovered that he was charging patients for the care they had not received, leading to an insurance investigation. They found that the money was being used to finance his family's house in Florida, as well as numerous trips to Disney World. Tot was over $100,000 in debt and was being sued by two financial firms. Nothing in any of the evidence that was turned up showed that Megan or the children were aware of what was going on. Their usual winter trip to Connecticut was canceled without giving any reason to their families. And it wasn't until mid-January when family members began receiving disturbing texts from Tot that anyone thought there might be a need to investigate. An initial wellness check did only a cursory job. But on January 13th, 2020, it was clear by the eviction notice on the door and mail piling up on the porch that something was wrong. Anthony Tot wandered out of his house, his body shaking in an odd manner. When the officers entered the home, they smelled a strong odor that made their hearts sink. With dread mounting, they searched the house and confirmed their suspicions. Megan, the children, and the family dog were all dead and significantly decayed. Attorney Scepter, real quick. I've received an inquiry from the jurors as to whether they may take notes on the transcript. Please remember that, pursuant to the instructions, the transcripts are not evidence, so they will not be sent back into the jury deliberation room for consideration uh, if deliberation is required in this case. You are going to take notes. Uh, you will be permitted to take your personal notes back for consideration if you're called upon to deliberate. So after the video is shown, the uh, courtesy copies of the transcripts will be collected. You may continue, State. Everything okay? I'm here. Uh, we're here, right? What are you saying? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Spell the last name again. T 
T-O-D-T. Okay. Our case number is 20I004299. Turn this stupid thing off real quick. Maybe. Maybe. I can figure this damn thing out, right? There we go. Okay. Um, just to let you know, I'm recording this. Just like the conversations we had the other day um, at the hospital. What I want to do is, this is what I read you the other day. I want to have you just, I'm going to read it to you again before I speak to you, obviously. So, Miranda writes. I'm required to inform you that you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Can you speak up a little bit? Yes. Okay. Anything you say may, may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. If you're not entitled, entitled to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning, or, sorry, you are entitled to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning. You understand? Yes. Okay. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one will be provided before and during questioning without charge. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. I know verbally you said yes. If I could be so kind, or if you could be so kind, could I get your... You can read these? Okay. And I'll throw your signature right there if you can. You can read them for reading whatever you want. I know you said yes. Which one will... You got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you take it up? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> What I'll have you do, obviously, you're in a set of handcuffs right now in the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. If I could ask you, could you raise your right hand for me? Do you swear that everything that we're speaking about today is going to be the truth and nothing but the truth, the best of your knowledge? So, have you got? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, it's a very tragic event, very unfortunate event. Tot is in handcuffs due to the violent nature of his crime, although he has made no act to physically resist the police. He has sworn to tell the truth. But given how many times his story has changed, this is a meaningless gesture. Um, earlier this week, we were called to your home. Obviously, I'm just doing this. All three of us have already spoken. Um, I don't know what they treated you for. I don't know if it was something to do with some liver, kidneys, or something like that, enzymes, or something. Um, um, Benadryl overdose. Benadryl, okay. How do you feel right now? Regarding health wise? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I feel very sad and very upset that I'm still here. And yeah. Is there somewhere else you'd rather be? With my family, not on, the, on the other side. On the other side? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you do know your wife and, and children are deceased? Yes, and that's where I want to be. That's where you want to be? Okay. All right. Um, well, some, some, some progress has been made, has been made since uh, we last spoke, okay? I, um, I had the unfortunate event of attending their autopsies yesterday, okay? Um, and we'll get to the kind of the, the, the details on that. There are some um, some questions that I have based upon what I've witnessed yesterday and then what we've last spoken about. So just to clear my mind and go through everything, I'd, I'd, I'd like to just, just start from the beginning, if we can. How we, how we led up to where we're at right now. Okay. 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 For, uh, <clears throat> for a while, uh, my wife just started. I, uh, she began watching these videos, talking about the afterlife, talking about salvation, talking about how families go to slow down a little bit right now. I'm just having a hard time keeping up with you, too. I'm sorry. That's okay. Let's speak up. And 
in watching these videos and watching everything going on, she presented them to me, and I started watching them with kind of a, um, uneasy, like, yeah, whatever. And the more and more watched, the more and more I gained an understanding that there is more than this life here. Mm -hmm. A higher, a higher, um, level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then we started researching and researching and researching, and then we started finding more about the world is coming to the end, the apocalyptic end, and that our families are separated and, and enslaved, and to better to avoid this, to all go together. Okay. You mean die, die together? Die together. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So, because my wife's been chronically ill for a while, this really appealed to her, and because it appealed to me also, because she wouldn't be in any pain, the family wouldn't be separated, mm -hmm. uh, there would be no more sorrow, no more heartbreaking, no more anything, it would be a, a salvation and everlasting life. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we kept doing our research, kept doing our research, kept doing our research, uh, reading up things, meditating, and decided that, yeah, this should be a thing. This should be what we should do. Okay. We had sat down and talked with the boys and Zoe just on different things about you know death and the way the uh, you know what would happen if mommy died. You know how would you feel? What happened when daddy died? What do you feel? And because this response was like we don't want you to die. We want to die with you. Okay. So when did you guys start talking to the children about this? No, it was before Thanksgiving. Okay. And, you, and your wife first showed you these videos when? When she started watching them, or she first started showing them to me in April. April. Okay. And what was she using to watch these? Her Microsoft Surface laptop. And that's the one in the blue case? Yes. Okay. It's a flip. Yes. All right. Okay. Go on. So you talk to the children. You talk to the children. Just get a general understanding of what they want to do or not. And they didn't want to live without us. Okay. Tut is using all of the right code words for a fanatic, but context is critical. Not only is this one of several motivations he ends up giving, but there is no evidence to support his claims about his wife researching this subject. When you add in the fact that Tut was in legal trouble for scamming his patients, had over $100,000 in debt, and had defensive wounds on his body from the victims, it makes you look at his claims in a new light. Tot also had more than enough time to kill himself, but somehow never managed to accomplish this, even though he says it is his goal. We didn't put him back and say, we're going to die and you know, leave you behind, but you know, what, would, what would you do if mommy and daddy died? And we don't want to live without you. We don't want to live without you. In conversation with my wife, we didn't want to live without them either. We wanted to bring the whole family together and make it transverse together. So we were coming up with different things of how we could do this. We didn't know how we could do this um, because we're not violent people, okay? Not violent people at all. Um, first we said, you know, uh, what if we, you know, we started reading different things. There's something came on TV about cough medicine, okay? So could they have some cough medicine that I put them to sleep, like overdose of cough medicine, just put them to sleep. And that by peaceful death, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so my wife made a pudding pie, pudding pie, jello pie, mm -hmm. um, froze it, and nothing happened. What was in the pie? Uh, what was in the pie? Sleep, ease, these uh, different things with drama, how you do it. The stuff to put you to sleep. And you said you have, you have a medical background, is that correct? I have a medical, but not a chemical background. Not a chemical, okay. Yeah, I'm a physical therapist. Okay, so you don't have all the like, terminology and all no, no. that? No, I your wife? She's a physical therapist now. Okay. We, so you, we look it up and... Where did you guys look this... I was going to just fix and ask, where did you guys do the research at? We went up and down the... Honestly, up and down the um, aisles of the uh, Publix and asked the... Um, the, uh, the drug guy. Can't think pharmacist. Of the pharmacist, thank you. You know, what's something good to put you to sleep? No trouble falling asleep. When did you guys start doing this research? That started research... That started research before... Halloween, um, but I 
just intermittently trying to figure out when it was going on. You know? mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when we found out that the best the best drug in the, the, to use was that drama. It didn't it's stuff in um, Benadryl. Um, that's the safest way to put it away. That's the safest way to put it. So it didn't work. Um, so we kept thinking, thinking, talking, and just researching different things. And finally, you know, we started researching, and researching. And we said we're just going to have to do some sort of examination. Okay, bleed to death. Okay, and that's how they used to do it way in the back when they used to do sacrificial things. You take a bleed to death. Bleed to death. Oh, bleed to death. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Okay. And so we started researching where would be the easiest to stab to do when that so the kids could bleed to death, maybe in combination with the sleep drug. Okay. Okay. And that's how, how everything led up to be. Okay. So that's through research. You guys have found, now you're saying you and your wife did this together? Mm-hmm. Okay. So in doing all the research and everything, what, what, how did we get to Monday morning? You know, what, what, take me back to the holidays, when do you think the children died, that type of stuff? I'm still trying to remember when the children died. I can't put those pieces together. Yeah. And I'm sorry. No, no, you're, you're fine. Um, we wanted the kids to stick around for the Christmas holiday concert because we didn't want to disappoint that. Did you guys celebrate Christmas Day? No. No, the kids were there before Christmas. Because family is saying that they, yes. lose, well, that they spoke with Megan the day after Christmas. Was Megan alive the day after Christmas? No, they, they, she died right under, 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 uh, the day after the boys did. Right. I remember you saying that the other day. That's why I've, I've made contact now with your family mm -hmm. and with Megan's family. And so Megan's family is 99% sure that uh, looking back through cell phone records and stuff that they spoke with her, not text message, they spoke with her the day after Christmas. No. And she said the children were sick. No. Okay. But then he goes on to directly contradict family members and phone records to lie about the timeline. He is ready to deny reality if it gets in the way of his story, which is the mentality that probably led him to this point in the first place. Open the door, door make a hug and kiss, and pretty much we know what you need to do. Come back at me when we're done. So I went into the Zoe's room, and it took me two or three hours sitting there because it was, it's a tough, but the everlasting salvation, the, the thought of that everlasting salvation was there and I needed to save her soul, we wouldn't know her to be with us. Men kept coming in, what's going on? I'm like, it'll be done in a little bit, it'll be done in a little bit. It's, it's getting past that, that I'm not, I'm back, you know? The initial thought was to, um, uh, to stab into the umbilicus uh, above the above the navel, so I could get the inferior vena cava or the abdominal aorta and be um, bleed out with no no time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I know I tried. I don't know if I ever punched it. Um, I don't know if I did or not. I saw a little mark on her, but I, I don't know if I saw saw anything. But then. She rolled and it started swiggling and I put my hand over her mouth and I put a pillow over top of her. So she went through, and then she started to fade away. And I just held that until there was no motion left. So you didn't lay on her? I did lay on her when she lay on her belly. I'm sorry, I laid on her to keep her down and I put the pillow on the top. Okay. Do you think you stabbed her or no? I don't know. I don't, and I didn't, I didn't see any, I didn't see anything. Okay. So how long would you say it took you to take her life? The whole motion? 
like from the minute I was sitting in there, or from I was saying once once you initially take action. Okay. Did you have a knife with you? Yes. Which knife did you have with you? The small knife. Which is what color? Green. Okay, that's the green buck knife that you talked about. Green buck knife. Yes. Okay. All right. So you had that in her bed. Mm -hmm. um, so how long from the time that you had the knife out to the suffocation until you think that she was deceased? I want to say 10 minutes, 15 minutes, right around there. It seemed like that light night took forever, so it's hard to really gauge on the time. Okay. And you said you used a pillow over her head? Yes. Was she face up or face down? kept moving. I think she was with on her back with her head towards the the wall. So in that, in that way. So for ten minutes to fifteen minutes you held a pillow over your daughter's head? Mm -hmm. How long did she kick and scream? Only for a couple minutes. A couple minutes? Mm-hmm. So like two minutes? I, I had no timer, but yes. So I'm just saying three minutes, looking back. And I just held, held it there for like a long time. Yes, it is. Did, any other, did, did the other children hear her? No. Did your wife hear her? My wife kept going up. I, I felt her in the, in the, opening the door and see what was going on. She the door and walking back. Okay. Dot is able to describe how he brutally murdered his preschool-aged daughter with no emotion whatsoever. He has totally disassociated himself from the situation, justifying his actions by pretending to believe he was being merciful. Because you wouldn't just, you just see the light coming in. Okay. So you think the sun was coming up, or was it just the light from the... It was the light from the, the hallway. A light bulb? Okay. Um, so now Zoe is deceased. Mm -hmm. And what happens next? Walk out. I was sick with Megan in the room for a little while. How was the body? How do you mean? How, how, was, did you, how was the positioning? How, where was the pillow? There was a pillow behind her head, and her hands were out to the side, and I made sure the covers were on top of her, just in the essence to keep her warm. Did she have anything in her hands? No, I had put a rosary in her hands later on when I moved. When you move the bodies? When I move the bodies, yes. Okay, we'll get to that. And that was post rigor? Yes. Okay, okay. Sorry, we're getting a little bit ahead of us. No, that's okay. I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm sorry. Okay, so Zoe's gone. You and Megan console each other, whatever you guys have to do. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? We go into Alex's room. Alex's room? Yes. The one that's to the stop in the one upstairs. One upstairs, okay. Yeah. And, um, Beforehand, we had talked about the aspect of she's got to hold his feet down, and I'll do, I'll do the stab. How old is Alec? 13. Okay, so he's the oldest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what happens? We walk in. He's on his back. She holds, she's just sitting there holding his feet together, we're just in there. Just eyeing each other, just gaining the confidence, I guess, you know. And I go to, I, I, I stabbed him, and he started kicking, I was trying to get up, and he kept rolling. So I ended up putting a, you know, there was a pillow there, and I put a pillow in the back of his head so he wouldn't hit me with the back of his head. And I reached around with my hand and held his um, nose in his mouth. And he kept rolling and kicking and rolling and kicking, and then it eventually stopped. And where was Megan at? Megan left midway through there and went back to the room. Alright. How long would you say it took to kill Alec? That one I have no idea. It, did, it went quickly, uh, but I don't know. Okay. And there was blood and everything in his bed? In his bed, yes. Where did you stab? Where did you stab him? The, in the stomach, the same spot that we identified as you know, where you could get the inferior vena cava. And, and what area did you call that? Inferior vena cava? No, 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 no. You, you called it earlier abdomen. 
it's our way on the other I think you used another term earlier it was uh, the one that you specifically spoke about about the naval umbilicus umbilicus yeah and the umbilicus okay is that something that you researched in there or you knew that from your your profession so research and learn ahead of time okay especially on a website called quora.com let's spell that again Q U O R A dot com Q U O R A dot com yes and what is Quora if I go research this what is it going to show me Quora.com you can ask anything they want as people feedback uh, we happen to find it just by looking up knife uh, techniques um, and you ask it anything and they'll show you and they'll tell you and explain to you the best way to do things and where to do things and suggestions how to commit suicide and I was going to ask is it like a suicide website or is it a it's an everything website so I can go in there and say, how do, I, how do I change the oil on my... That I don't know. That is it like medically based or... It's not medically based. It's um, a lot of topics that people talk about, uh -huh. but don't, I guess, talk about on the internet. I just used it for suicidal techniques and also to get um, ideas how to do it with the knife. When did you, where were you doing your research on Cora.com? Started that before... Halloween. Before Halloween. Yeah. Where did you learn of that? You may have said this. Where did you learn of Quora.com? I happen to be just researching knife techniques. And it comes up and a couple of the questions came up as, you know, uh, how do I kill myself with a knife? So I clicked on that and it was Quora.com. So I clicked on Quora.com. There's a whole bunch of, there's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, as I know the internet is very crazy. I've never seen what Tot is basically saying here is that he learned how to kill his family based on information from random people on the internet. Anyone can answer questions on Quora without needing to be a verified expert. Ultimately, Tot stabbed children in the stomach, which didn't require any level of skill or research. If he did this in the manner he is describing, the children felt intense pain. So. Looking up the subject was completely pointless. Talking about knife techniques, like was it uh, how to cut up some steak, or is it no. how to offensive techniques, defensive knife te technique? Okay. All right. Okay. So you done your research on that going back pre Halloween? Yeah. Um, you did you have to create any type of accounts or anything like that? Do you, you go in and ask questions? Uh, the suicide ones when I was asked about suicide, once you like, clicked in two or three times, uh -huh. like you know, the links, uh -huh. it asks you to verify your age okay. uh, through Google. Okay. So you just click out and just do three more times without. Right, so you don't have to have like a login or a sign in name or any mm -hmm. create an account? You can create an account, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Um, do you remember which device you were using when you were researching Quora.com? Uh, my my iPhone, I don't know what the phone number for that is, I want to say it's 0742 or something like that. 0742, you mean the passcode? No, 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 the, the phone number to it. For the iPhone? Yeah. What was the passcode for that one again? 5108. Five, 5108? Five, Correct. Just for your iPhone, which is what you did the research for Cora.com. And also my, my black um, Surface app. Surface? Tablet? Yep. When did you do this uh, research on the tablet? Intermittently between. Is there a login or is there a sign in or I mean um, a passcode for your tablet? Passcode for my tablet is 75, it's a face one, but I'm pretty sure it's 7577 capital G lowercase ULA. Okay. Dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, just have to log in. Yeah. Alright. Okay. So. Getting back to taking the life of Alec, and is it A-L-E-K? Yeah. Okay. Alec, who is 13, mm -hmm. um, you're saying that you were solely responsible for his uh, life loss, his, his, right. his murder? That's right. Okay. Your wife, at this point, was where? She had gone back to the room. Okay. Had you, had you given the children... Um, any medications prior to this night? I know you talked about the, the, the pie or whatever that your wife had made. Um, 
up until this point, were the children routinely given any type of medications? I was giving some supplements here and there. Okay. But. Alright. So the night in question, they weren't under the influence of anything? They were just normal? No, well, they had the, um, the, um, what'd you call it, a pie or something like that? Pie. Yeah. But then that, that didn't work that night. I don't, I don't remember if we gave them anything, because the, the, those are two separate nights. We tried to buy the one night. We tried it before. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't remember if we tried anything that they decided or not. So you didn't try to like sedate them or anything like that prior to killing them? They were asleep. It doesn't make sense why we wouldn't. We, we, yeah, we must have given them the cough medicine again. We must, I'm sorry, we must have given them the cough medicine again. Uh, I, I'm just thinking if you're trying to no, do something like that. Yeah. And, you, and you've done a lot of preparation. I mean, you have to prepare this. The guy that started bleeding quite a bit, but then being strong, he kept moving, moving, moving. So then again, I had to uh, like put a pillow on top and my hand, and but he went really, really, really quick. So a lot of blood. I didn't see much blood because I had not covered up. Uh, like how much blood came out. I could feel the blood coming out because it was all over my hand. hand. But it was, it was bloody. No, I'm sorry, I didn't ask him. Um, Please. With the boys, which knife did you use? It was all the green knife for the kids. And the buck? They were, they were both buck knives, but the green knife was for the kids and the one Megan used to uh, stab herself with. She also used the green one? Yes, okay. because we established the fact that I had to get a bigger knife for myself because my body mass is bigger to get the same thing. Okay. So Tyler, in which room downstairs was Tyler? Tyler was in the library room downstairs. Library room? So if I walk in the house, where's where at? You have to walk in the house. The first room on the left is the music room. Mm -hmm. The second room on the left is uh, the library room with the double French door things. Okay, and that's the room. Was he on a mattress? Was he... He was on the ma uh, mattress, and the mattress... My wife is very adamant about um, 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 mattress covers. So he was on top of the mattress cover and all his blankets and everything. Dot's story about separating the boys to different floors because one was sick is just a little too convenient. After all, if they had all decided to die, why would it matter? The more realistic explanation is that the older boys were placed separately so that he would have an easier time killing them one by one without the others hearing and coming to help. Okay. Did that mattress stay downstairs? That mattress stayed downstairs. The cover and the everything else was brought up when I brought him up to the room. So obviously there should be, if he, if he bled or bled out, there should be signs of that on the mattress. The mattress was clean because of the, um, the, the cover. What do you mean by the cover? By the mattress cover. Okay, which is cloth? I don't know what it is, but it doesn't allow fluid or anything to go through. Okay. All right. When I moved him, I was able to under the, under the cover. So that some time later? Correct. Okay. All right. So Tyler is killed. Who's in the room when he's killed? It's just me and Tyler, Megan is outside in the door. What is she saying at, at, during any of this? She's doing meditations. Was she drinking or consuming anything that would maybe... Not at that point, no. ...bring her down? Because okay. it's just a lot for a parent to go through. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot for a human being to go through, mm -hmm. let alone a parent. Okay. But we had salvation in mind, we had the greater, and that's... In our honesty. That's it. We love our kids, and that's it's sad. I, no, I got you. I understand. Okay. So now all the children are gone. How long until the sun comes up? I don't know. It might be about five o'clock in the morning. Around that time. Was the sun coming up like part of a rule or anything like that? Because you mentioned it a couple times that Megan told you that they have, you have to do this before the sun comes up. 
Is there is there a reasoning behind that? I don't know. I don't know why the reasoning was behind that, but it would have to be done before the sun came up. Yes. Okay. So it's nothing during your your research or investigations or anything like that that has nothing per mind. I don't know if it was on her side research or whatnot. I, okay. I was just told that they needed to be done before the sun came up. Okay. All right. So they're all deceased. What do you guys do? To go up to the bedroom. To start talking. How do we want to? What, you know, the kids are dead. What do we want to do now? What's going on? What's our next step? You know, what are we going to do? You mean this wasn't planned? It was planned, but it was like just the dog. Did she want to go first? Oh, and then you just you know, because you know, there was some discussion of her, me going first and her staying, staying last. Her, her going first. She wasn't sure which one she wanted to do. So we decided that the, you know, the dog. We went with the dog with us, so we, she held the back side of the dog down and like put the, um, they call them Mexican blankets, they're like these you know, blankets around, and I was able to hold the, the knot in the, her snout and her um, nose closed, and she went peacefully. Picked her up, put her in her bed. And Meg was like, I want to go next, I want to be done. And then what? So you just suffocated the dog? Yeah. Yep. So if there was any type of marks or anything like that on the dog, you wouldn't know anything about it? Okay. What kind of marks were on the dog? I, that, I just suffocated the dog. You didn't stab the dog? I didn't stab the dog. Okay. Just stab one on the dog. That's interesting because I, I, didn't, I didn't stab the dog. Okay. Well, there, there's a stab wound on the dog. Okay. I, the dog was collected as well. So. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I doubt. Like, no, 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 it's, it's neither here nor there. I'm just telling you. No. Okay. All right, so you kill the dog. Mm -hmm. And then you say you like put it in its bed or something like yeah. that. Where did you place it on? The bed and we wrapped it in the, the, the blanket. We're not put it underneath the um, bedside side table in, the, in, her, in, her, in, her, in her bed. Her. Okay. What was her name? Breezy. Breezy. Okay. Did you meet, I'm sorry, where did you kill the dog at? It was on the foot of the bed on Megan's side. In the master room? That's correct. Okay. And that was, the final resting spot was in the master bedroom, correct? Correct. All right. So the dog's dead. Mm -hmm. Now what happens? Meg wanted to go. Okay. So we have decided, and I said, well, do you want me to get your wine? Do you want, what do you want to help calm this down? You know, so it won't hurt as much. We had some spray stuff, and so she, she could use that instead. So she wanted some wine and some, um, it's purple, um, Tylenol PM. And she started taking that a little bit. Gave her the knife. Tot can explain away the stab wound on the dog and presents as if he doesn't know how it happened. He then claims that his wife wanted to take wine and medication to help reduce the pain of her death. In truth, Tot most likely drugged her drinks without her knowledge, so she would be unable to fight back effectively. And I lay next to her and she put the knife into her stomach. Okay. And I said, did you get the spot? It's right here. Said, yeah, I feel it. Okay. I'm laying there, laying there for 45 minutes. It's supposed to take about, so about 10 minutes, whatever it says. If, if you hit the spot. And what is in that spot? What are you talking about? It's going to be in a cover. Okay. And then, and then you're supposed to be able to bleed out. They say in one to four minutes, so I'm like, under ten minutes. And what are you specifically targeting within that area? The inferior vena cava. Okay. It's, it's a big blood return. Okay. Okay. Now, it's a large vessel, and you bleed out in your abdomen. It's, it's quick. All right. Okay. How much, how much did she consume? Wine or, or the, I'm assuming, is it grape flavored? You can take one whole. Yeah, the first one was grape flavored. Um, what do you mean, first one? Uh, she had a glass of wine with the, with the stuff, okay? We were laying there for about 45 minutes. After she stabbed herself, she says, I feel nothing happening, nothing happening. I said, okay, this isn't good. What, what do you want to do? Like, you know, she said, do we have any Benadryl? I said, we have a liquid Benadryl. She goes, let me have that. Let me try some of that. Maybe that will put me to sleep or let me go sooner. So she was drinking a liquid Benadryl, Benadryl, Benadryl. I was checking back on her, give her some peace. Walked around, came back, walked around, came back. 
And at one point, I thought she had passed from doing the Benadryl. Nope, she was still there, and she had sat up. What made you think she passed? She was very quiet. There was no motion. I couldn't see her abdomen going up and down. This is from afar, without even me going up to see her. Okay. Was her eyes open? Eyes were closed. Was she communicating with you? At that when I just came out, you know, I was like, Meg, I'm here. I said, okay. You know. So I said, what do you want to do? Do you want to try more Benadryl? Do you want the knife back again? What do you want to do? And she goes, let me try some more Benadryl. And then if that, we'll do a second. What's that? Okay. Give her a bunch more Benadryl. Like I said, let that settle in for a while. Settle in. When you say a bunch more, do you got a about approximate amount? I really don't. I know she was a, 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 she was a bottle. bottle. Yes, yeah, she was a, a, I don't know, it was a big bottle. Okay. Uh, like a, a family size Benadryl thing. She could, she killed the whole bottle? In, in two different sippings, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. And that wasn't happening, so she decided to do, go through her liver. Okay. We looked at, I pulled up the thing and the pad liver, we laid it out on where, where it was on our skin. Okay. You know, you know, according to landmarks. And I said, it's right in this area. So, okay. And she, with two hands, pushed in. And you heard like a little click, as if it went through something. Okay, so I was like, okay. Sounds like it went through the liver, that's good, okay. She pulled it out, she put the knife right next to her. And I just laid with her. And I laid there and held her. And we just waited. It seemed like hours went by and nothing else happened. I, I got up. I wanted to check on our, our boys, our little one, make sure everything was going okay in the house, everything was okay. Came back and she's sitting up at the edge of the bed. And she's sitting in the room. I'm like, what was she cleaning it with? There was uh, uh, one of my t-shirts. Um, she had, uh, I think she had a towel at one point. Okay. Um, But she was up, I can't, but she was up, she was washing it, at one point, point. and she's like, this has got to be done, it's taking too long, this is ridiculous. I'm like, shall we just go on, look at different other aspects to do this, how do you want to do this? She was, I want this ended now. I said, okay, what, what does that mean? She was, I want, to, I want you to take the pillowcase, put, it, put a pillow, and put it over my head. I said, huh, I don't know if I can do that. And she looked at me, she goes, if you love me, you can do this. I want to be with my babies. And so, yeah, you know, it's, and she just looked at me, she goes, you're strong enough, and you can do it. Okay. So, I said, why don't you take some more Benadryl, so at least you're not going to fight me. And I'll do it. So she took some more Benadryl. She took some more Benadryl, and maybe about 15 minutes later, I came back to her room and I said, you still want to do this? And she talked to me, like, uh, very far out. Yeah, get it done. So much Benadryl would you guys have? I don't know. Uh, did you have to go get any more? His description of his wife's death is almost completely impossible. The combination of force and willpower needed to stab yourself is higher than people think. And with enough wine and medication in her system, it would make it even more difficult. She might have managed it once, but not several times with increasing doses of medication and time to think. Tot also expects the detectives to believe that Megan, with multiple stab wounds and a massive overdose of Benadryl, got up and started cleaning. As for asking him to smother her, that is also unlikely. It is not a peaceful and painless way to go, although Tot tries to portray it that way. During this time? During that time? No. When what other times did you have to? Uh, after that was done, for me to commit suicide. And so you were prepared. I mean, you basically you had enough to take care of the children and yourself, or, or Megan, Megan, and myself for what we thought. How many bottles do you approximately think you had? We had two boxes of Sleepies. I know that, which is straight dimethyl, which is um, these little the pills. Um, we had two things of Tylenol PM, I remember that, which is a great purple one. And I think we had two bottles of Benadryl. It's a big bottle. Family size? Yes. But getting 
through a million, did she take it all? She ended up taking a lot more than what we had thought would take it. So, I so her, her number should be a lot higher results-wise, you know what I mean, like as far as toxicology. I'm assuming, yeah. Okay. Um, when she was cleaned up, you talked about the wiping of the towel or something like that, did you see a substantial amount of blood or anything outside of the body? She has she kept the shirt on, I didn't look underneath. Okay. Um, did you see anything on the bed? Blue blood on the on the sheets, but she, then she changed she wanted a different sheet, I remember that, so she put a different sheet down. So the old one should still be back at the house? It should be. Okay. So she tells you that it's not working, she wants you to suffocate her. Right. Uh, that was the gray pillow I think you kept talking about. It's a little gray rectangular right pillow, yes. How big? Uh, it's like one of the ten pillows. Like, yes. That, right. Twelve by the... It's a... It's about the size of half of your case there. It's not your case there. Uh, okay. Yeah. Alright, so a small gray pillow is going to have something. Hold on, hold on. I want to make sure I'm telling you everything perfect. When she changed the sheet, she put a bunch of sheets on the a bunch of stuff that was wet on the um, bathroom floor. And later on, I cleaned up and threw that away. So the original sheet is there. I threw it away. Yeah. Okay. Threw it away or washed it? I threw it away. Okay. So any of the sheets that were like found in like the washer dryer or anything like that, are they related? Involved? I didn't do any wash, I don't think. You haven't done any laundry since Christmas? No. Okay. Right. I don't believe I did. Okay. I'm just going to throw that sheet away because that was like, that was for blood. That sheet was for blood. Okay. Alright. Um, so, go on. Proceed. Sorry. It's okay. So then it, it came to me. Then Megan asked that I wait a day or two to make sure everything they were right past, make sure the house was all set and that kind of stuff, and come. So that's what I did. I started, I started the Benadryl. I tried hanging myself. The so Benadryl you had to go buy more of? Correct. And that was where? I went to CVS 24 Hours, I went to Publix, and I went to Walgreens. There's one across by the Starbucks. That's like CVS. CVS, so you went there. Mm -hmm. The Publix is right there off of Blake, which mm -hmm. is right there for the celebration. And the other one is where? There's a the Walgreens right next to Five Guys in the little restaurant thing there. Oh, the new area. That was correct, yes. Okay. And this was the day after or so, or when did you start purchasing more Benadryl? Not the day after, so yeah. Did you purchase anything else besides Benadryl? Alcohol. What okay. kind? Um, rum. And some more, um, Coppola. It's our wine. What's the wine? The red wine or something? It's Merlot, yeah. Okay. And I also thought that it might be easier. See, we didn't, I'm not much about guns in the house, but I was reading on Quora that you could kill yourself with a pellet gun. Pellet gun? So that was me. It hurt. Where did you shoot yourself? In the liver and the heart. Back to two wounds. The liver and the heart. Mm -hmm. The liver the first time. And the blood went quite a bit. Didn't do anything, but I woke up later on. With a straight face, Tot spends a story about Megan changing the sheets to clean up. A woman who, if he has been telling the truth, is drugged and bleeding from multiple wounds. It is hard to tell what purpose this lie serves, but somehow it makes sense in Tot's head. According to their convoluted plan, Tot was supposed to wait a few days to make sure everyone was dead, something that would not take nearly that long, and to make sure the house was taken care of properly. What that is even supposed to mean is never made clear. All of the ways that Tot attempted to kill himself are done in such a way that can appear as if he was serious, but still allow him to live. The pellet gun, in particular, in combination with his body mass, was almost certainly done just for show. After everything Tot had already done, if he truly wanted to die, he would have done so. We'll have it checked out, but we'll photograph it later. Is the mark still there? 
I, I haven't looked at the oh, one, I'm so sorry, it's been forever. Okay. Um, that was the last one. I tried the razor blades, the radio artery, which I told you I hit, but they didn't do it well in the, um, in doing the tub. So dry up. Um, zip tie around the neck. The only thing that did was irritate my, my glottis. I couldn't get on the carotid artery because my neck is too big. So I tried to substitute that in with the um, towels with pressure points for the carotid arteries. I tried to um, set up hanging over the edge of the beds. I um, was trying to figure out how to go through and fall on the knife on the right direction to get it upward, up into my, throw my knife for to get my, um, what should we call it, um, diaphragm. Um, was also researching, but couldn't quite get to the femoral artery, because of the way the, how deep the femoral artery was. Mm -hmm. Where were you doing your research at? The internet. Well, I mean, um, what device? Uh, Meg's phone and my phone. Meg's phone, okay, and which phone? Because I know you said you had two. Uh, hers is 6465, and that is, um, I think she had a pink case to it. Okay. Which phone was lost? My 6536 one, a Samsung. Um, and that one was lost before Christmas. And where was that one lost at? It was lost in Florida. I don't know where I lost it from uh, the airport down. Okay. That was the Samsung? I think yeah, the Galaxy Note no, or something. Galaxy Note 10. Okay. Which phone was left in a, like a Starbucks or something in Sarasota? That one was that phone that was mine. Um, and I drove it from, got, went back and got it. Which phone? I don't know the number. You don't know if it was an iPhone or a Droid? It was an iPhone. It was the, your iPhone that yeah. you have now? It was still yeah. the same phone? Yeah. Okay. So you went back and got it. And I can't remember, was that when the family was still alive that you went down there to Sarasota? No. They were already dead? Mm-hmm. Okay, and you drove the, the van, the, yes. the red van down there? Mm-hmm. Was there ever a white van or something involved? Was there a moving van, or did it appear you guys were moving at some point? Like moving out of that residence? That was just how what people were saying. I don't know if there's any truth behind it. No. Okay. Prior to the deaths, I mean, were you guys planning on moving out of that home? Prior to the deaths. Um, we had planned to... I don't okay, know. so like, did you ever get a rental truck or anything like that? Or, yeah, they went. Did, uh, but, but when you guys moved in, anyway, like, or when? Like, May. May? About 2019? Yes. Okay. So, somebody had said they saw like a moving truck or something out nearby on the residence, near the, near the house, recently? Was it us? Okay. All right, that's fine. No, it was not. So people were calling in, so people were saying, oh yeah, it looked like they were moving out or something like that, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys never had a movie truck. All right, mm -hmm. on to the next thing, sorry. Um, so you drove down to Sarasota, left your iPhone at a Starbucks. Did they call you, or how, how, did, how did that go about? Did you call it, or what? How'd you get your phone back? I was leaving, and turned around, and I realized, I started going, and turned around and went back. Okay. Um, what were you telling family? during this, this time frame, like around the deaths and after the deaths? That was either a vacation at the beach, or I was looking at PT practices to purchase. Who were you communicating with? Sisters and mom. Your sisters? Which sisters? Kelly? I wasn't communicating with Christy anymore. Is that Chrissy or Christy? Chrissy. Chrissy. Yep. You weren't talking with her anymore? Mm -hmm. When's the last time you talked with Chrissy? Two weeks back. I don't know the date. It was, I, I really don't know. I'm sorry. What did you guys talk about? Um, I was pissed off that she wouldn't stay out of my business. Uh, okay. How about your last conversation with your mom? That we were going to eventually be coming up and talk about moving up north, that kind of stuff, just to suffice her and calm her down. Okay. Have you talked to your dad lately? So. When's the last time you talk, talked with him? Uh, 
don't know. I really don't know. Do you guys have a good relationship, or...? We have a decent relationship. How about you and your ball? I'm uh, not very close, and that's why I had to really be... really be evasive with her. Could she tell that maybe you'd be evasive? The detectives try to get an answer about whether or not Todd was planning on moving, but his answer is evasive. In truth, he was deeply in debt and behind on payments. In the apartment that he claimed they rented out, witnesses say that it was fully furnished with the belongings of Megan and the children. Megan had also purchased Christmas gifts for the kids. Signs point to Megan either leaving Todd or wanting a temporary separation. She could, that's why I had to reinforce the fact that I'm trying not to be. Okay. Your sisters? My sisters just, they love me. And they have a sixth sense. They do love you. I struggle with them. Yeah. I struggle with your family. All right. So Meg's dead. You come back from Sarasota. We were trying to establish a better timeline before. But approximately... when she was taken, when, when May died. And you're adamant that all this all took place before Christmas? Yes. All right. Positive, 100%. Yeah, before Christmas. Have you communicated with anybody after that? Has anybody texted you? Have you been using any of the other devices? Anything like that? Using the devices to text people, yes. And that's... Why did you do that? Keep people away so I could finish myself. Gotcha. I was in a panic world that I needed to... I need... I still need to get to them. Yeah. I still have to get to them. Yeah. And... People are getting closer and closer. I know people said that they were communicating with what they thought were your family members mm -hmm. and ultimately it wasn't no, it, was me. it was you yep. the zip ties and the knives and the research and everything how come it didn't work zip ties didn't work because I couldn't get enough compression on it the knife because in all honesty I chickened out and cowered it out with a knife Okay. I've tried, I've taken so much Benadryl, then I took this, you know, taken the alcohol to Benadryl, and every time I seemed to live a little bit closer, closer, closer. There was one day, somehow I woke up in the garage, um, in my urine and whatnot, um, and I had thought I died back then, I died then, oh. and didn't, so. Okay, and where... How quick after did you move? You said you wanted the, the family to be together, mm -hmm. right? So take me through how how does this take place? How, how does because when they were all killed, they were all in different positions inside the home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens? The first day I, lay, I just laid in bed with Meg. The first day after she she died, just laid in bed um, with her. Um, I want to say it was the second day after she died. I said, okay, time to get things moving, time to get everything going. And went in, made sure she was covered and everything was taken care of. She was on the, her, I remember her left leg had fallen off the bed, which was kind of weird. So I, I was able to move her left leg up and tuck her leg underneath, tuck underneath to get her nice and comfortable. Moved Zoe in, put Zoe in. Um, before all this was done, we had all these, we had the kids bring in all those little, those little altar things. There, there were like favorite items or something? Yes. Like okay. So I had to fix those because I knocked those over. That's right, put Zoe up. Good. Okay. So I fixed all that. And then it was a, which one do I do first? So I bring Tyler over, or do I up, or do I bring Alex up? And I thought just because of, the, you know, my strength, and I, I wasn't too strong at the time right there, that I should get Tyler upstairs. Tyler from, he was the one that was downstairs. He was the one downstairs. He's 11. He's 11, yes. Okay. So I was able to get him up on my shoulders and carry him up a little bit, little bit by little bit. 
Okay. Then to back up a little bit, I want to get I want to speak about Zoe. Yes. So Zoe was in her bed. Correct. Had you checked because Ritter was kind of Ritter Mortis was brought in, but you talked about it. Yeah. Did you check on her periodically to see when she'd come out? I hadn't. No, I hadn't checked on her periodically. I just knew she was in Ritter. Um, just because I went to go. Tot still shows no emotions when talking about his family's remains. Although for any normal person, watching the process of the bodies breaking down would be traumatic. It was winter, and during the period after the deaths, the electricity was shut off. The house would be quite cold, but it wouldn't substantially slow down the decay. Position her, so in my mind she had to stay warm. Okay. And her arms were outside, so I went to put her arms down to make her nice and comfortable. And I couldn't move her arms, and I was like, okay, she's still on my girl. So I brought the blanket above her just so that she'd be warm until I was able to reposition her. And when you say reposition her, when you're, when you're doing all this, is this still while she's in her bed, or did you already moved her to your bed? But she was still in her bed. Still in her bed? Yes. Okay. So when she's movable, yes. and under the blankets and everything, at that point is when you moved her to be in bed with Megan? Correct. I, I, I upped the, um, the fitted sheet. Mm -hmm. I scrunched it together and carried her in my arms and laid her flat, made sure her head was comfortable on the pillow, and put her, let her sit there. Then I had to pick up everything and knocked over. Okay. And, and her head, because I understand that she was at the foot of the bed. That's correct. Right? So she's laying like this, left to right, Meg's laying like this. Is her head towards Megan's side of the bed or your side of the bed? The head is towards my side of the bed. Okay. Her feet are towards. And you slept, if you're looking at the bed on the left side of the bed, Megan slept on the right side of the bed? Yes. Okay. So her head's on your side, left side of the bed, mm -hmm. positioned feet towards Megan. Correct. All right. Wrapped up in a blanket. Correct. All right. Okay. So Tyler's next. Mm -hmm. Tyler is downstairs. Correct. You said that. You were able to get him eventually upstairs to mm -hmm. the room. So how do you do him? What happens? I moved his mattress from his bedroom because he wasn't on his mattress. Okay. Moved his mattress from his bedroom and put it on the floor. His bedroom upstairs? Correct. Okay. Then pick him up and just carry him up at a time. His items or trinkets or whatever you call them were already in the in your bedroom? Mm-hmm. And what, did he, what specifically did he want to bring with him? He wanted the scarf, the soccer scarf. Soccer scarf? Yep. And what team was that from? That was from the Team USA versus Canada game. That one took a couple weeks prior. Okay. Team USA. Okay. Did you position that on his body? No, I positioned it on the, on the toy box itself. On the toy box. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you said something about um, your daughter's hands. What did you put in her hands? A uh, set of rosaries, I think. set of rosaries? Mm-hmm. How about Tyler? It was some kind of religious aspect, whether it be rosaries or some kind of um, something along that line. Now, did you guys already have these items? Those are mine from collection growing up. Growing up. All right. Did you grow up in a church? I was a forced Catholic, yes. Forced Catholic, yes. Okay. Understood. Okay. So Tyler gets a set of rosaries. Mm -hmm. How is he positioned? He is on his, when I put him on, he is on his, like, towards his stomach, with his head towards the side. I just can't remember which. His head was facing, I think, back to the back of the wall, back of the, of the bone jar. Back, okay. Is he on his face? Is he on his side? How is his face? He's on his side. Half of his face is like, it's, it's more so like right here. Okay. All right. Um... And then that leaves Alec. Right. So take me through that. That one was tough because I had to get the mattress out from underneath him because I couldn't drag him on the mattress. Mm -hmm. So it took the blanket, his, uh, his comfort blanket, put it on the ground and it moved him to the ground. Then moved the mattress into the room. How did you move him to the ground? What do you mean? I picked him up and put him on top of the comforter that was on his bed. I put the comforter on the ground so he wouldn't be laying on the rug. Put that on the ground, put him on the ground, brought the mattress into the room, make sure the mattress is set, and then put him on the 
Did you have to like drag him by the comforter, or did you pick him up, or how does this work? I moved, I moved the sheet, and they okay. put the comforter on the bed, then I took the sheet, picked the sheet up with him, okay. and put it onto the, onto the blanket, the, the comforter. comforter. Moved the bare mattress into the room, okay. so I was able to pick him up and take him. I was adamant I did not want to drag him. He was my son. I did not want to drag him. Um, so I picked him up as hard, as the best I could. And the little steps at a time I got him through. So you carried him? <laughs> you carried all the children? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Taunt seems to think dragging his children's bodies is worse than murdering them in the first place. The religious props seem to be a theatrical touch because the family wasn't overtly religious. But it adds to his story and Tot probably assumed it gave it an element of authenticity. Something that you wanted to do as a parent? Versus dragging them? Right. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I, the ultimate respect to them, I understand we have different opinions about it, but the ultimate I can see it. Do okay. you want to drag them like a piece of No, no, it's just me. Absolutely. Okay. So you get him positioned, you get Alec positioned, um, on the mattress. Which way is he positioned? He's on his side. Um, okay. Moving up to our bed. Moving up. He's with the left towards us, on one side or the other. But I'm pretty sure he's facing up to his bed. Okay. I think. Okay. Because I know one of the boys was almost face down when he was found, and one was on his side, like you just described Tyler was. So I was wondering maybe if Alec. If any of them were. Uh, who closer face down that would have been Tyler. And Tyler was closer to the to the bed next to your wife? No, Tyler was the last one. Okay. So Tyler was the one closest or the farthest away from the bed. Correct. Alright. So Meg, Zoe. I'm sorry. Alan. Yeah. Tyler. Correct. Okay. You got it? I had to burn it. You need a uh yeah, kind of tissue, you know? Yeah. Megan, uh, in the attempt, or somewhere in that room. 
sometimes right on the edge, uh, on the floor down there, okay. uh, between the bed and the um, the window. And every time I said, well, let's try it, and it's like, well, now I got to depend on that for three foot, we can get done quicker, and then... The tower was on during this time frame? Yes. Where'd you guys keep the temperature, do you remember? I don't, but I want to say, because I was in charge of it, because I was over there, I was 68. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Up in the room, I think there was like some, I don't know if there were humidifiers, I don't know if they were moisture. Or yeah, what those, are, those are air purifiers. Air purifiers. Mm -hmm. Were those there prior to? The white one in the by the window was there because we kept the air purifier going because we both have heavy allergies. The black one I brought in from uh, the boys room just to keep going. Then we use candles and that kind of stuff and I did sage smudges and that kind of stuff. The detectives are trying to determine how Tot didn't manage to kill himself during the two weeks he spent with the bodies of his family. Trying to overdose was clearly not working. And if he was determined to die, he would have become frustrated and tried a more certain method. There is no three-day wait period for a shotgun in the state of Florida, something he would have certainly known if his research was as thorough as he has implied. So, for what? Sage so smudges allow for spirits to pass on and that kind of stuff, so I wanted to make sure no one carried kept stuff. Candles were for the same reason? Yep. So, it's been some time. We, we weren't found, or we didn't get there till what, Monday, which was, would have been the what, 12th maybe? 13th. What were you doing there during this time frame? We're talking over two weeks. Trying to kill myself. Were you leaving the home? Were you going over to the other place in Georgetown or whatever it is? I went over to the other place once because um, my daughter really, really, really wanted her Mickey Mouse, um, Mickey Mouse uh, necklace. So I went up into the, the condo to see if I could get the Mickey Mouse necklace to find it in the jewelry box, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find it. So she didn't get it. Now, was that the only time you left? No, I would leave every time I would be up until I needed to go get either more alcohol, more Benadryl. Um, and just food as we try to get as I try to get through this. Publix or fast food or a fast food, unfortunately, but I thought it's put to Went to McDonald's once or twice. Okay. Um, Were you checking the mail? I checked the mail also. Okay. To make sure everything was, you know, bringing the stuff so that nothing would leave suspicion out in front. Okay. Deliveries. Pulled them in because I didn't want any, anything to be seen during my uh, being not successful time after time after time. To yeah. Um. So there was like a pile of boxes and stuff like near the door. Were those like? Presents or what, what in the world was all that? Pile boxes in the door. Yeah. So the people at the scene were telling me that there was like, it appeared like almost like Christmas presents. Did the kids get to open Christmas presents? No, they weren't alive for Christmas. They were not alive for Christmas. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the trencher. By the I think there was like packages or something like they were talking about. Yeah. Okay. So during this past weekend, the power was shut off, is that right? Sometime this weekend, yes, I'm not quite sure when. Okay. Uh, recollections were, I don't really know, I'll be honest with you. Did you often sit out on the front porch? Often sit out on the front porch? No. Because the day that the agents and everybody were there, you were, out, you were seen out on the front porch. I know, I don't know why. I don't remember that morning really, like how things matriculated. Um, I just remember I pounded the door. And just hours before, I'd already fallen down those stairs once before. So, why is that? 
my legs gave out probably because I was so uh, OD on Benadryl or dehydrated and I was peeing brown. Mm-hmm. So I was probably just so dehydrated there, so whatever. Okay. Um, but I don't, I don't know exactly how I got, like I said, I remember the end door knock. So it was this fast knock. I was like, okay, so I came downstairs. After something, something was telling me somebody was coming, and I did not know what the whole deal was. Um, but last the night before, I remember feeling like the house was being surveillanced. You know, seeing all these red and green knots and uh, yeah, there were things. I, I I don't know if it was, I, don't, I don't know what the cause of it was. Okay. Um, but I came downstairs and I opened the door. And no one was there after the knocking because it took me for a while to get down there. That was the night before? No, that was that morning. Oh, that morning? Yeah. And after that, I don't have much of a recollection of, except a bunch of guys coming in, and I don't remember. Okay. I don't know why I was sitting on the front porch. Yeah, I guess you were sitting out on the front porch, and then they went and made contact with you inside or something. And then I also... I remember seeing Megan out there talking to you guys, which wasn't true. No. No, I know, but I'm just telling you what, you know, it's like, so I don't, that's why I mean, I don't quite... But now that it's been a couple of days, you probably have a better recollection of what's, what transpired that morning. I don't... Tunt describes how he would leave the house to buy more Benadryl, search for his daughter's necklace, and pick up fast food. He was able to function well enough to run errands, but still couldn't come up with a reliable method to kill himself. Starvation wasn't an option, since it appears he couldn't stand the discomfort of hunger. He had two weeks or more to come up with a story, and this was the best he could do. It's almost as if he looked up other people who had committed similar crimes and cobbled together some of their methods and excuses. I have a, too much of a recollection that morning, honestly. Well, I mean, looking back, I mean, I can tell you now she's she's deceased. No, I so, she, so we know she wasn't talking. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you, do you remember what, when they come in the house, mm-hmm. do you remember what you told them? No. Okay. All right. I, I, I don't. All right. Um, one thing that just popped in my head, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It's a, what all, did, what all was purchased at the Academy Sports? The two nights. Were they the only things you purchased that day, or what? Uh, they were intermittent days. You did purchase, purchase that together? No. The green one, when did you purchase it? That one was purchased right after Thanksgiving. After? How about the other one? The other one... Sometime afterwards, before Christmas, because we're, Meg and I were going over what needs to be done, stabbed and wearing, she made a comment to the fact that the green one wouldn't even go through me. So you might get a bigger one. I had to get a bigger one myself. Okay. So there was like a, a whole bunch of items that, that appeared like they came from Academy Sports, like with a bunch of the SKUs, still, like tags and stuff like that. There was like mm-hmm. a bag of stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like some clothing articles and that type of stuff? It me clothing. I remember I picked up two fishing lures, I think it was. Okay. The boys wanted to go do some fishing of some sort. So we figured, you know, if we had time beforehand, we could go check out the two lures. And then I picked up um, the two pellet guns on two different occasions. Two guns on two different occasions. One, one, yeah, two. One on one occasion, one on the other occasion. Okay. How many times did you frequent academy? No. Uh, sorry. I might have gone there f- four times or five times. Is there a row? The clothes. In the, I know what you're talking about. There's clothes in the back of the van. We had picked up a bunch of clothes. Um, for Alec. Okay. Okay. Because of upcoming events and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we weren't quite sure when everything was going to occur, so we had a bunch of clothes purchased for him. All right. And did you know it was a family when you guys purchased that? No, it was just uh, my guy. The kids are home with uh, Zoe. 
during any of the trips when you were buying fish and lures or anything like that, were you guys with the kids? No. Okay. Colored guns, when were they purchased? After the kids had made were dead. I'm going to see right before Christmas or right after Christmas or around the time. Um, do you guys use any debit cards, credit cards, cash? Cash. 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 Mm -hmm. When's the last time you used a debit card? Or a credit card? I don't know, but I haven't needed to. Purchase, uh, we purchased those um, clothes on credit the pellet guns were bought after the rest of the family was dead. And this seems a half-hearted attempt to kill himself at best. Tot has managed to kill four people and a dog, but suddenly becomes inept when it is time to join them. As sad as it is to say, it is looking more and more as if he never intended to die and was just too inept to try to escape. I remember that, the Bank of America, but after that, we had cash around, so we just decided to use cash. So prior to their deaths, you guys were already using cash. Mm -hmm. All right. You said you used the Bank of America card for the clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, where's the guns at? One was underneath the bed because I shot myself. I was laying next to the circle underneath the bed. The other one. I found out was not that good of a whatever, so I put it in a uh, reusable shopping bag in the, in the garage on the top shelf. Is that one of those um, bags that you bring to public for whatever? Freezer bag, yep. Okay, oh, a freezer bag. No, 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 those, those, those reusable cooler bags. Things. A reusable cooler bag on top shelf in the garage? Yes. Now, there's like a detached are you talking about that, the garage out there? Yes. Okay. So the detached garage, top shelf. Top shelf, looks all in there, yeah. All right. Is there any other weapons or anything like that in the home that was used to, used during any of these deaths or anything like that? I don't believe so. So the two knives, because we got those. Mm hmm And the two guns. Mm hmm All right. Um, did you guys leave any notes or journals or anything like that? We left a note trying to explain what we did. Did you guys sign that? No, we just typed it up and printed it. It was already printed? Mm -hmm. Was it printed when Megan was still alive? Uh, no, I printed it after Megan was alive. We wrote it up together and, and I just didn't print it before. Did you print that off of which computer? Was it a My tower? It was a phone. Your phone was connected to a printer? Yeah, you can air print. Oh, okay. So that, that there would probably be a record or something on your your phone of that. If I saved it. I don't remember if I saved it or not. Right. Um, what kind of zip ties did you try to use? Uh, they're, they're about that wide. Mm -hmm. And they're long. Um, pretty industrial. Where'd you get those at? Uh, Celebration Hardware. Is that like an Ace Hardware or something like that? So, Celebration Hardware. Yeah. Where did you buy those? I bought those not for that purpose. Uh, I bought those for the sofa because we had trouble with the sofa uh, keeping together. So I bought that for that. Oh, um, yeah. Beginning of October. And then afterwards I looked at it and was like, this, I could use this for myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, did you physically put one around yourself? How did you get it off? Well, to the bathroom, and I have what my wife calls the industrial strength toenail clippers, mm -hmm. and I was able to cut it with that. Okay. Where is that zip that tie at? They were all, I tried it multiple times. Mm -hmm. The pieces of them I kept in the box on top of my dresser. What kind of box? It's just a, a box, brown box that had soap in it, okay. um, and I just piled them there. I was trying to keep the place neat. So the used zip ties that were around your neck mm -hmm. are on a brown box. In a brown box. In a brown box mm -hmm. on top of your... Black dresser. Black dresser inside of your master bedroom? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Any 
anything else that was used? Any type of straps or ropes or anything like that? The strap that was going to use it's a... Uh, Got any use or used? I tried using it. Okay. Uh, for a set of purposes. I hadn't gone that way yet. Mm -hmm. I was going to use the Benadryl and whatnot and to try. Um, those tensioner straps? We talked about the other day. Ratchet straps. We did talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, we talked. You, you mentioned it the other day. I just didn't know. Okay. Well, just trying to run through things. It's okay. So it's either going to put it on the... The hinge of the door, put my feet against the door and lean forward, or do the same thing up in the bed. It's able to hitch it. Did you wrap that around your neck? Mm -hmm. Like trip test it? Mm -hmm. what, what, what color was the straps? Red. Red straps. Where are they at? Um, the the tension at that there. Yeah, the ratchet strap. Yeah, there's one. Okay, where's it at? It's up on my side of the bed hanging on the headboard. Okay, so it's hanging from the headboard. Mm -hmm. okay. Um we talked about a bunch of like homeopathic type of stuff, like some alternative medicines or whatever that you may have tried to use or you know, that you believed in or whatnot. Um, the detective brings up an interesting discovery in three, two, one. One interesting thing I had that was brought up to me was there's uh, arsenic. I know. <laughs> Tell me about that. Oh, there is arsenic? Yeah. Where? In your home? If I want to know that, I will use that. So you didn't use that? No. Okay. Where was arsenic? It was collected. There's a lot of like old school medicine. I didn't know if maybe because you had talked about the other day your wife was maybe into like a little bit of alternative medicine. Yeah, she's in alternative medicine. So there was like thistle weed or thistle weed or yep. something like that. Yeah, thistle weed. Yeah. What is it called? This something milk. Milk the milk thistle. That's for the liver. Milk thistle. That's for the liver. Mm -hmm. um, liver detox. So did you know that there was arsenic in your home? No. Hmm. So that should not be in any of the bodies? No. Okay. That you know of? That I know of. Oh. Yeah, because I think that would have probably killed you. But I was trying to see if I could mail order arsenic. Really? I'm going to. They have this pill out of Mexico, too. That gets through, gets caught up in customs 10 to 20% of the time, so I was even trying to do that. Was it like a suicide pill or something? Yeah. Damn. Do you also research that on your phone or tablet or something? Or? It was a phone, I do believe, at that time. So that was, that, was that after the death? Mm -hmm. after I'm grabbing at anything. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like you're desperate at that point. All right. What are you most upset about? That I'm here. I'm not with my family. Let me see. Let me see the list here of this. So, I've been in constant contact with the family. With your family. Your living family. Mm -hmm. And there's some things here that I'm going to try to answer for them. Okay. Because there's... You upset a lot of people. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to get into your beliefs and everything like that. You and I both agree that we don't have the same beliefs. All right. I'm not saying, I'm not discrediting you. I'm not saying that you're a bad person or anything like that, but there's just some things that I don't believe. Okay. All right. Did you guys, since you guys seem very planned, this is very methodical, I mean, other than the fact about you taking your own life, uh, which I, I, I'm still kind of questioning because you guys, if you had such a, a method and you've done your research over this time, I don't understand how you get to the killing of the children and then you and her have to take some time to see like, okay, what's going to happen here? Am I going to go first? Are you going to go first? It just seems like to me that you guys would have a set regiment. Like, okay, before some of the children have to be gone, the next day we're going to console each other, do this. Then you go first, then I go, and here's how I'm going to go. Now, I've already said, you're, you've already said that you chickened out, but it seems like to me, that you would have already had a plan. Like, you would have said, okay, well, here, I'm going to use this knife or I'm going to use this gun or something. It seems like that just doesn't make sense to me. Okay? I understand that. And I'm not getting upset or anything. I just don't know. I just don't. I, 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 I'm just telling you as it is. And I, I appreciate that. Did you guys have any wills in place? We had a will in place some time ago. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's up to date. Okay. Um, it, was, it was made like six years ago. Okay. And uh, is... Are, are, are you supposed to have your parents go over things, or your, who's, who's kind of left in charge to, to take care of what you guys have, or as a family, I mean, who's supposed to step in? No, I have. 
sort of the rule doesn't say, I mean, you obviously probably weren't planning this back six years ago. Mm -hmm. you, this is this is something from 2018. Because I have to note on the, on the desk table, hopefully when you guys have found us, saying, when you find us, this is person contact on Cindy, uh, Cindy Gatto, and this is where the car is, this is where the um, um, Insurance policies are. This is where the will is not all that stuff. Okay. So that note should explain everything from this newest development in your life, as far as the plan to take to kill each other and then to move on. No, that note doesn't explain anything. It just tells them where everything is. Okay. To contact contact uh, Aunt Cindy. Well, yeah. That's Megan's Aunt Cindy. Megan's Aunt. Yep. Yeah. And what's your last name again? Copco or something? Her main name is Copco. Yeah, okay. All right. So some of this stuff is for some of this stuff is for the family. Okay, both sides. Um, why was Tyler saying he wasn't returning to school this semester? Even the detective is finding it hard to give credence to Tot's claims that he intended to kill himself. There was too much time and planning involved for things to suddenly start going badly when he was the only one left. While the detective remains professionally calm, there is a slight tightness in his voice, betraying the fact that he is tired of having to pretend that Tot's contrived story has any basis in what actually occurred. He might not have been able to return to school his school last semester because he might have been going to Montessori school. Okay. Yeah, anybody going to a different school? Okay. Why was Megan telling people you guys were coming up for Christmas? And I don't know if that's in person or if that was via text. If that was you telling people via text, then let me know. Or no, we, we had never said we were coming up for Christmas. Meg never told anybody. Not to my own knowledge. For, for Christmas, for our, our thing was to sit down here. All right. How did, the, and this is more or less for me too. I mean, this is this is something that they bring up. But were the children really that receptive to it? Were, were they that understanding of this pact from the beginning? They can only understand to a certain point because they were children. Correct. Okay. I'm saying thirteen and, and eleven. I mean, I have some. They could have been sent to a certain point with their children. Okay. We explained to them, and we wanted to get their feelings about the aspect of, you know, if mommy and daddy die, you know, if mommy and daddy take their own lives, and uh, get their feedback. And their constant response with different excuses and question was they want to be with us. Okay? And do you, what do you think led Megan into researching this? What was her... God, the ridiculous amount of pain and the ridiculous amount of just art, just, she can't, couldn't live. She had just a recent miscarriage. Okay, um, tell me about that. Um, we had one miscarriage before when she got sick. When was that? Let's see, Tyler's 11, so that'll be about eight years ago. Okay. So she had a miscarriage, where were you guys at eight years ago? We were living in, Connecticut, uh, we just vacationed down here. We had bought that Georgetown a while ago, didn't 2005, yeah. yeah. Well, we bought it and then we were expecting it. Uh, Alex, we. Um, so we decided to go up to family to have the baby. And that increased family tension, would be on belief. Okay. Um, so, so she miscarried about eight years ago in Connecticut. All right. Did she go to get any, any treatment or doctors or anything like that? She does. She, when she got sick with that major liver thing, mm -hmm. which is real over the same thing, mm -hmm. she started seeing doctors. We went to doctors up and down, thousands and thousands and thousands. Where at? Brigham, Women, Brigham and Women's Children's Hospital. We went to Yale. We went to Hartford Hospital. We went to uh, Bacchus Hospital. We went to... Was there any primary that she would see back home in Connecticut? Yes. Um, Dr. I... Uh, He's in Canada, uh, Canada now, Dr. I can't remember his name, I'm sorry. Okay. But the other primary doctor was Dr. Kendra. Um, Kendra? Kendra. Uh, yeah. Waterford Crossroads. Um, 
that's her last name. I can't remember her last name in a second, I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, um, what city? Where was she at? Waterford. Waterford, Connecticut. Connecticut. Yep. Okay. So she had been to the doctor up there? Yep. Multiple. Yep. Yeah. Had she been to any in Kissimmee or in Central Florida? Uh, not till we came back down here. Okay. And who was she seeing down here? She saw a lot by telecommute. She saw... She would go to celebration? She went to celebration. Okay. So they would have to have some type of records of her? Yeah. All right. How about the boys? How about, the, how about Zoe? So we remember the Franz Center. Where? Franz Center. Is that, where is that at? In Orlando. Okay. Um, at Spano, I can tell you. How about dentist, specifically? Yeah. Where at? Uh, Celebration Dentist. Celebration Dentist? Yeah. Oh, can you have everybody? Your wife? Uh, my wife, no. My wife would go to... Sage. Sage Dental? Sage Dental, yes. Is that in Orlando? It's right down in the Loop. Oh, in the Loop? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. And I think my two boys went there also, but I know my two boys went to pediatric dentists. Perfect. In addition to Zoe. Okay. We're going to help us, obviously. No, please. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Um, okay, well, that's good news. Um. Bizarrely, Tot appears to try to be blaming all of this on his wife's miscarriage which makes no sense. If she had become despondent over such an event, she should have been given medical treatment. The idea that you would go along with the suggestion of killing your entire family because your spouse is depressed is ludicrous. Megan is getting a lot of blame in Todd's story since she is dead and conveniently unable to defend herself. Even the note was printed out after her death and there is no proof she had a hand in writing it. And the most recent uh, miscarriage you talked about, you spoke of, what was that? That was in September. September? September, yeah, around right September. What happened? We took some time to get away in June. We found out we, we were happy, you know. Went to Nashville, went to all that kind of stuff because the kids got back, everything progressing. Boy, I started getting sick. There had been a couple times where I would fly in and literally take the next flight out to come back here because she was in such pain. Things progressing, we went to an ultrasound and it was that whole, oh, maybe this, maybe that, you know. Was, where did you go to the ultrasound at? The celebration ultrasound. Like celebration ultrasound or celebration? The in the hospital. Hospital. Yeah. Did you guys go to like the ER or was it just a regular mm -hmm. schedule? It was a scheduled ultrasound because we started with the, um, you guys realize because we weren't sure we were going to do a home birth or not. Okay. Um, and because Meg was over 40, they wanted to get us into an ultrasound just to make sure, confirm, and everything. And there was, you couldn't hear anything, couldn't see anything. How far along? We want to say it was about eight weeks, six to seven, eight weeks in that aspect. Six to eight weeks? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we weren't sure, so they rescheduled another ultrasound to go back two weeks later. And then um, I flew back to Connecticut, and that was one of the ones where she literally called me, got a hold of me when I landed, and said, you need to get back here because I'm having a miscarriage. I'm, I'm hemorrhaging. Okay. So I flew back, and she had a complete miscarriage, and everything. Tell me about the miscarriage. Did you go to the hospital? She went to... Um, Her uh, nurse midwife, sorry. Nurse midwife, where at? I'm trying to remember. I cannot remember the name of it. I apologize. It's in Orlando. Okay. But, but there should be some type of documentation. There should be, yes. And was there any type of medical procedures or anything like that at that point? No. She, they would send her um, things like go get another repeat ultrasound or go get, you know, or not repeat ultrasound, but repeat blood work to make sure her, um, what are the hormone goes down. Okay. So she's hemorrhaging. Mm -hmm. She goes to the hospital. I don't know. What, what, tell, me, tell me about it. What happens? She lays in bed. Lays in bed. All right. How, how long went and passed by from the time that she was hemorrhaging to when she was seen by the midwife? 
How long was she in bed? Okay. Right. Was there an elaborate story that you guys possibly buried something on the property? It was buried the thing on the property. You buried the the piece. Yeah. Okay. Where at? Underneath the bush in the back. Underneath the bush in the back. Okay. Where is the bush? Right by the propane tank. Bush by the propane tank is where you buried. Uh, this little thing. You said item under. Yeah, we burned it. Burned it? Yeah. There we go. Thank you. We burned it in ashes and then buried the ashes. So you buried the ashes? Yes. Okay. So this will be your house, Tony. Correct. Right here, that's your pool. Yes. Okay. Where's the bush and for painting? This is a garage. Okay. There's a pole filter, the propane tank is here, the bush is right there. Right here? Oh, okay. Somewhere in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the propane tank and the bush are right there. Yep, the bush is okay. the propane tank is behind the bush. Okay. Okay, well that answers that. I mean there was there was some concern. From the family, did you guys report that up? Or did you guys tell the family up north, your family up north, about that? We told some, yeah, because yeah, some of them knew, and some of them was didn't necessarily know what to believe. Um, was Megan actually ever diagnosed? I know we talked a little bit about it the other day about possibly like Lyme's disease or something like that. Was she ever diagnosed anything with the kidney pain and everything? Everybody kept throwing out all different diagnoses. Nobody knows what's going on. Okay. So she had drug-induced hepatitis. Drug-induced hepatitis. Yeah. And who, who diagnosed her or whatnot with that? Brigham and Women's, uh, uh, um, Brigham, Women's and Children's Hospital. Okay. Where's that at? Massachusetts. Mass. Brigham, Women's and Children's Hospital would have record of, t of some type mm -hmm. documenting her that she has. Correct. Okay. Um... Now, some of this is kind of getting off topic here, but I'm, I, I typically don't do this, but in this very uh, extenuating circumstances, I, I felt that I should try to answer some of the questions that are out there. Obviously, it's been brought up that um, your finances are, are a mess. They are a mess, yeah. yeah. Does Megan actually know the complexity of your financial mess? Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with the finances, though. Okay, and that's, that was kind of my... This has to do with Todd is lying about his wife. There is no evidence that Megan knew anything about the state of their finances. Todd was keeping her out of the business and the same town at this point and was still spending money lavishly. She may have suspected that there was something wrong by his behavior, but it could have been anything from an affair to some form of addiction as far as she knew. Back to, because with the transition, the apocalypse coming toward the end of days coming in the end of December. We needed to make this transition because by the end of December, this is when this was supposed to happen. The apocalypse and everything by the end of December. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, how about if she would have kept the baby? Would you guys still have done this? This is what's supposed to happen. I'm just saying this. I me and you, because it seems like uh, when you speak about the, the miscarriage and stuff, that seems like it's a trigger, like it's a, a stress or a depression. It's a, yeah, absolutely. So do, do you think, and we can speculate, I don't know, I mean, to, what's done is done. Do you think that if she was going to have, because you said you were joyous, you were happy, mm -hmm. do you think that maybe that would have changed something if she if she were to keep the baby? With the knowledge that we had, that this needs even then, this is what happens. Okay. Your beliefs are your beliefs. Beliefs are beliefs. Okay. Okay. So you were set in stone. There was okay. Um, did you was was notifying the family prior to this ever part of it uh, ever part of the plan or anything like that? No. no. Okay. Keeping it very private, like you said, you were kind of Correct. you guys were a very private family. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys spoke of you guys had a will together. Did Megan have one on, on her own? Did she have her own will? No. 
you guys just had a, a family sure. month. Okay. Um, and this is more or less stuff for the for the attorneys and stuff. But did you guys have any life insurance policies? In yeah, that's right. It's, it's all in the box. In the all room. in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys spoke about like Knights of Columbus or something. Knights of Columbus. Yeah. Knights of Columbus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you know what he's talking about. Yeah. What do you want done with um, the stuff here in Florida as far as the Georgetown properties and the, the personal effects inside the home? Whatever needs to be done. Okay. I, I, I don't get involved in that. I, I'm here just speaking about the, the deaths and everything, but I, I've spoken with the family and I said, listen, that's something that maybe you guys need to work out with, with some attorneys and stuff. But I just told her I would try to, try to answer some of this. Um, we don't care. We want to leave everything behind. Okay. Because right. obviously if there's photographs and stuff like that, these are their nieces and nephews and grandchildren and that type of stuff and, and loved ones. They want, they would love to have They can have anything they want. Okay. Um, they love you. They don't understand um, everything that took place. Um, they're angry, they're hurt, but they're going to hold on to the memories and everything that they've had. And um, they want to remember the brother before all of this. Okay. So they looked up to you and they admired and everything for you. Um, is there any message or anything like that that you want me to relay to them? Because I will speak with them today. Just tell them that I love them, but this was done, the decision our family made to do. Okay. Maybe not so bluntly, but... No, that's fine, that's fine. Um... You said ashes earlier. Who, who, who's the cremator? Meg was. Meg. Yeah. What did you do with it? We got a paint can from Celebration Hardware. Put it inside. A, put the ashes inside of an empty paint can. So the ashes are actually inside of a paint can buried paint. underneath. No. It was paint. 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 P, P A I N T. Paint. Yep. We put them inside there. Put a little olive oil. Put a little bit of um, sage and burn. Let it burn, and then when they calm down. We dug this little hole and put it in the ground. In the can? Nope. Just the ashes? Just the ashes. Didn't want to pollute. Okay. I understood. I got you. All right. Tot has nothing to say that will comfort his family. None of them will believe that those children chose to die. All he is doing is adding lies and betrayal on top of an already horrible act. Let me get you a little bit more water. I need to step out and um, go over some things real quick. You okay for now? As best we're going to be. Yes. Okay. All right. Give me a couple minutes. All right. Let me just work. Be tight. Task of attending 
autopsies yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it's part of my job. However, everyone is not easy to go through, especially children. All right. I have children of my own, so I often think of mine when I see other children like that. And, 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 lots of stuff runs through my head. Sorry. Okay. However, some of the evidence noted and some of the injuries that were noted um, are consistent with some of your statements. Okay. So there are ways, you know, I don't know how much training and education stuff that you have as far as in the medical field. I know you said you're a physical therapist. Blood flow, we spoke of earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So you understand that when a person is dead, their heart is not pumping. Yes, we all agree with the same agreement on mm -hmm. that. Which means that if there's an injury to a person, mm -hmm. like say a stab wound, mm -hmm. they would be able to tell all right, if there's no blood that is being pumped at the time of that injury. Okay. Okay. Which would make that wound postmortem. Okay. After the person has been deceased. After the person has been killed. Okay. So, looking back on things, the boys. Yeah. Are you sure that you stabbed them prior to them being deceased? Yes. 100% sure. Without a doubt. Okay. So if a doctor, medical examiner, tells you that the wounds, or tells me, are done post-mortem, mm -hmm. what would you say to that? Absolutely correct. Okay. Absolutely correct. Okay. You're firm on that? Firm. Okay. Everything we've talked about mm -hmm. has been pretty damn consistent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the biggest things were uh, she had some concern yesterday that, that it appeared, and, and she even noted that the boys' injuries, without a doubt, were, were done after they were dead. Okay. I can tell you that absolutely 100% because after it was done, they jerked and the knife went and had to find the knife both times afterwards. After I was done suffocating. Was the knife in them as they were being suffocated? No. Although Tot is adamant that he stabbed the boys while they were alive, forensic evidence doesn't lie. Tot has given a very detailed account of the events, but he has had two weeks to perfect his story. Clearly, he didn't count on the medical examiner doing more than a preliminary job. So, We'll go through this a little bit slower taste before as the far as the death. Okay. Okay. Remind me which which boy died first. Alec upstairs. Alec upstairs. He is thirteen. Correct. Laying in bed. Mm -hmm. You have the green knife. Correct. Do you have to in an, almost an attack fashion or whatever you want to call it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, if he's awakened, as my children would be, they would say something or they would, you know, see me. Did you have to close his mouth at that point to keep him from preventing? No. The way he was positioned, the, the knife was on top of him and the stomach was totally exposed. I don't remember if he was wearing a shirt or not, but the stomach was totally exposed. And for some reason, he had pillows blocked up on his chest. Okay. The way he was sleeping. So I put my hand on top of the pillows, the my left hand, my right hand stabbed. Pulled it out and then he jerked and the knife went flying underneath the square headboard thing. Square headboard thing? No, uh, the book, bookcase thing. Okay. He started swearing and kicking the wall and that kind of stuff and that's why I was able to get... Was your left hand physically on his face? My left hand at that time was on the pillows that were on his chest. Okay. So was his face exposed? Could you see him? If I looked, looked up a little bit, yes. Okay. So, how many times does the knife thrust into him? Once. Once. And I can't remember which boy suffered greater injuries. Do you remember? I don't. I, as far as marked wounds. That was one wound each. 
Well, one was greater than the other because one was more exposed than the other. Oh, okay. So almost as if it was maybe a, a slicing fashion or something like no, that. Both of them like this. How did you? How were you holding the knife? Like downward. Downward, yeah. Okay. And so you went in like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You wouldn't go in like this. No, no, it was like this. So I was going like this side. You were like this. You had his arm over the pillow, and your yes. stomach's here. His head's here. Feet are over here. Yes. Okay. I'm right hand. Your right hand. Your right hand. Right hand. My was Yes. Okay. And Tyler, mm -hmm. what happened there? I was like just on top of him. He right came with him. I don't remember how I held up the knife on that one. To be honest with you. So they were getting in the stomach. I pulled it out, and in the midst of him kicking, the knife went behind the sofa. Right in between the sofa thing. So you had to retrieve it in between each each kill, right? Mm -hmm. How were you holding it with? I don't remember how I was holding Tyler, to be honest with you. You said he was more of a fighter and, and that's He's stronger, yeah. He's more of a fighter. So would that be more of a blindsided thing? I mean there was were you quiet about it? I was quiet about it for both of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, gonna be, that's going to be some of the major discrepancies just between that. I mean, you're saying that was first before the killing or before the death, and then and the doctor's going to say something else. But other than that, um, you take full... You take full responsibility once it's done. Okay. If I commit suicide right now, I would. Okay, well, we're not going to let you do that. I know, I'm just... I know. I, I've made that very clear to everyone that I've spoken with that, that you do not want to be here. Okay. Um... I'm sorry, I have a different belief than you, and I, I don't just... No disrespect towards you, and I hope there's none towards me. No, I, that's what I meant. Okay. Uh, you've treated me with the utmost respect the entire time? Same. From day one. And I've done the same to you? Yes. Um, that's why I'm not hiding behind lawyers or anything. This is what happened. I, I completely uh, commend them. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very tragic thing that... Uh, you're right. You 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 you, you spoke of the other day. You 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 walked to a beat of a different drum or something like that. Mm -hmm. You as a, as the family, um, absolutely. I mean, you're going to be judged by society on certain things that you've done and, and a lot of stuff. And whether you care or not, that's up to you. Even by your own family. That's fine. Um, they don't need to understand everything we did. Correct. Maybe I was on the same page. We knew what we needed to do. We did it. Okay. That sounds snarky, I'm sorry. You're fine, dude. Don't listen, you're the, one of the most black guys I've had in here, I can tell you that. The constant refrain throughout this story is that Tot wants to die so he can rejoin his family. It is a safe claim for him to make since he knows he is in no danger of having to follow through. The other day you said that you don't tell everybody, family or friends, your beliefs and all that. Why is that? Because we get judged. You get judged how? Um, we get certain things like, for example, I'll... I'm trying not to... Well, maybe you remember being recorded right a second? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Everything you've said has been recorded. Uh, I just want you to know that. Right? Will the family hear this? What family? My family. Here? Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so no names then. Um, we went out looking at houses and Granted, we have different tastes in houses, different tastes in decor decorations. Mm -hmm. This has not been, it's always a la la, must be nice, that kind of stuff. And always kind of a little that way. So no, no, why we believe in people, they just don't understand why we go organic, why we go gluten-free, why we do this, you know, why it's always judged. So we just stop telling everybody. Okay. I know that's the part of food, but our own beliefs, even the fact that we follow a very non-traditional Catholic religion, we're, we're still judged. We're judged. Do are judged. Do I what we do? You know. So we don't. We don't tell people anything. Well, that's your. That's your beliefs, and you can stick by them. And I, I, I just said I respect that. Were the kids happy? They were very happy. Yeah. With us. They were happy. They lived a very happy life with us. Yeah. I do miss him. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I can't get, like, like we said the other day, I, I, I can't understand the children, but if that's something that you guys discuss, yeah, their whole life I had it worn out. These beliefs, when did, when did you guys start kind of getting into the, the, the beat of the different drummer and all that type of stuff, and was it? It's been transitional for a while. Yeah. Was it you or Meg that was primarily, uh... So I was born a follower. You were born a follower? I was more of a follower. Oh, more of a follower. Um, good. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, you know, first of all, do you have anything else of me right now? Do you have any questions or any concerns or anything like that right now? Um, unfortunately, for your sake, we are still on this side, okay? Um, you're not with your family right now. So you are going to be charged with their murders, you understand that? That's fine. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's a formality that, that we have to take part in, okay? I know you, you, you may see things differently. Fine. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, I will make some phone calls to your family just to kind of update them and keep them up to date. Okay. Um, without a doubt, the persons that we pulled from, from your home are your family. Correct? Correct, yeah. It's Megan, Zoe, Tyler, and Alec. Okay. The reason why I kind of went over some of the um, the dentistry and that type of stuff is yeah. obviously... Decomposition. From, yeah, because of the decomposition, we had a little bit of a, a delay in that. The family does know. They don't know some of the grotesqueness of it behind it. I've, I've kept it kind of private between um, oh. us. So... We're going to work on, obviously, some DNA stuff and everything like that, and uh, and we're going to take it from there. Yeah, it's that, it's that. And I appreciate it. You know, like I said, obviously, this, this has been a video audio recorded every which way. Uh, um, every part of this investigation, you've been highly cooperative. You've never uh, denied anything. The only discrepancies that we've had is, is post-mortem stab wounds versus what your version of events is, mm -hmm. and that will be duly noted in my report, in my investigation. Okay. I'm not lying to you about their stop first. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. All right. okay. Um, so just hang tight for us here. Um, I need one more thing. Yeah, I'm so sorry. No. You've been in the hospital the last couple of days, correct? I don't know how long I've been in Okay, well, the, the last couple of days, Wednesday. Yeah, Monday. Monday, yes. yes Wednesday. Yes. You're not on any any kind of medication. You didn't get any type of... Did you um, something? Well, you, you didn't, you're not under the influence of anything right now. Um, you know, you didn't, you, didn't get, you didn't take anything while you're in the hospital that would alter your mind or your thought know. process or... They gave me some kind of... Not knowing the day of the week, you know where you're at, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're at the Oxford County Sheriff's Office and everything like that. Okay. No, I don't. So yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. I just wanted to go back and say, oh, I don't know what the hell I was saying. I'm just out of mind and, you know, that's... Sound mind. I'm okay. here. Like, look it. Yeah. I'm just over with. Where are you going? Okay. Todd assures the detectives that he is in his right mind, but later he will claim that he doesn't remember his confession or killing his family. I have a search warrant for your DNA uh, for some comparisons and stuff, so one of the girls is going to come in and, and I'll let you have a moment, okay? You need more water? Okay, just let me know if you do. It's, uh, let's see what's on the card. 53 hours. It's after midnight? Huh? It's after midnight? No, it's, it's, it's in the afternoon. It's daytime. Sorry, that's that military stuff. What time do you guys speak? 12.52. We'll get you this morning. We got you like uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock this morning, something like that. Sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Bear with me. Over the course of several questions, Tot changed the reason for killing his family several times, but none of them made any sense. The closest possibility that could be determined was that Todd might have killed him for the insurance, or else he could not face them knowing that he had committed fraud. So he killed them to preserve the illusion of being the perfect husband and father. His accusations against Megan committing the murders herself or assisting him to do so 
were never able to be verified. Tot most likely acted alone. In 2022, Anthony Tot was sentenced to four consecutive life terms for the murder of each of his family members. In perhaps the first ruling of its kind, Tot was also given one additional year for the killing of the family dog, which was deemed an act of animal cruelty. Tot now denies that he was responsible for the murders and claims that he was not present the night his family died. Thanks again for tuning in. Drop a like if you like this video and check out my Patreon page if you want to support the channel even more. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.